Matthew chapter 18, verse 6 through 7. And when you guys are there, please stand. Amen. Amen. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. This is the reading of the word. Amen. 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 So, what I think, well, what I think this means is it was saying like people will go out of their way to not just um, like people who don't believe in God will go out of their way to put people down who do believe in God. And I personally have experienced this with people in my own family who are atheists. And like last year when I got baptized again at uh, the camping trip. Um, I would say not too long after my someone in my family were telling me that it was okay to sin and that I wouldn't have to ask God for forgiveness because he loves everybody which he does but she was saying you can sin and do whatever you want and it won't matter which that was completely untrue and um, yeah and just a lot of people in my family tried doing that, like tried putting me down for believing in God. And um, yeah, so that really stuck out to me because that definitely applies to my life. And yeah. That's good. That's good. Amen. 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 And it was saying, it was also explaining how the people that do do that to you and people that try to bring you down for believing in God, they, it will, they will pay on when it comes, like, God will deal with them, and, yeah. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all, give them some love. Yeah. Amen. 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 Come on. Okay. 
Okay. It wasn't 30. Jesus blesses little children. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For if such is the kingdom of God, assuredly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the reading of the word. And I ask that... Oh, you guys can be seated. Thank you. And I ask God that he takes um, every part of me away and... Fills me up with him. Amen. So I can give you guys a good word. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So when I was younger, I used to talk to prophetess and I would ask her like, you know, why doesn't God talk to me how he talks to you? Because I get your prophet and I'll be like, I want God to talk to me too. Like, you know? And she would be like, well, just forget the notes. She'll be like, she'll say, you know, God blessed you more than he blesses me. And I want to understand because, you know, to me, blessed back then meant like having houses, having cars, having money and all of that. But by blessed, she means blessed in spirit and blessed in your heart, if you guys get what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. And you got to learn when your prophet tells you something, you need to listen. And I mean really, really listen. Because everything, the more I grew and learned and observed and went through, almost everything my prophet has told me has came true. And like she told me, God loves his children. But as people grow up invested in worldly things, letting it consume them and control their every thought, we lose ourselves and we lose God every day more and more. And it's little simple stuff like even listening to a song with bad lyrics. It's everything in this world that we think is normal and we think is cool to do. It's really not. It's really not. Because people are out here posting themselves to bad music and demonic music that they think is, you know, cool. They think everything is tight now. Everybody want to be with the trends. And they're getting likes off of that. And that's really getting themselves famous for sin. Mm. Now tell me, is that not what selling your soul is, y'all? Come on, bro. That's good. That's good. We need to stop growing up, letting ourselves separate more and more from our inner child and God thinking we need to do everything everyone else is doing because that's how you neglect the Lord. You neglect your own souls, your mindset. People are neglecting their sexualities. I'm gonna go there and bring all these kids, but their body parts, their hair, clothes, religions, it's all fake. Sorry. And I really hope one of you kids are really listening. Because this word is meant for the kids. And to my fellow children, I want to tell you guys, don't lose yourself and don't lose God. Like Albert said, God is forgiving, yes. But why would you want to restart your walk with God? Mm. We grew up in this church, most of us. And if you haven't, you're here now. Amen. Why would you go back out into the world doing what everybody else is doing when granny... Sorry. Prophet is telling you what to do. And she's telling you because God is telling her. So that's why I say when your prophet tells you something, you need to listen because she wasn't lying. And this scripture wasn't lying when it says God blesses his children more than he blesses the adults. Now, I'm not going to go into all that, Okay. It's all right. We need to hear it, Nye. Okay. 
We got our young boys out here who grew up in the church, growing up to get on live, throwing up gang signs. When did that even happen? It's fake thugs who want to be like everybody else. Who want to be like everybody else. Who are you talking about me? Because why are you making a face? You sing. Just listen. Just listen. When your prophet tells you something, listen, right? Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's a new season, y'all. It's a shift. Y'all here coming out the mouths of babes. And I'm not I'm not targeting nobody, so don't think I'm targeting y'all. But I just want you guys to listen. I'm not targeting you. I want you to listen and learn. Because God gave me this word to give to y'all. Amen. Come on. Come on. It's fake thugs nowadays who want to be like everybody else and they're not going nowhere and they're killing each other, their own friends. And rest in peace to my friend who died because his friend shot him on accident, waving guns on live. You never know what's going to happen trying to be like everybody else, losing yourself from God. He was a sweet boy and he isn't forgotten and he never should be because God is trying to warn us. The night I wrote this word, it was about a week or two ago, and I could not sleep. I told um, Myrna and Prophetess about this. I was up for like a good three nights in a row. And when Prophetess would tell me like, oh yeah, I was up until four in the morning, I was like, I could never. Like when I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm going to sleep. But I was up until like 5 a.m., y'all, I don't do that. And I could not figure out why. It was because God had me up for something though. And I'm being 100% throughout this entire word when I say I was up. But he had been planning to show me things and I had no idea. He's telling us to come back though. Come back to your inner child and don't be like everybody else. Doing what everybody else is trying to do. Find your own spirit. Find your true spirit. The one and the heart that God blessed you with. Talk to Jesus and tell him that you want to hear him and tell him that you need to hear him. Let go of all the hate and the addictions and the revenge and set yourself free with the Lord with prayer. This is my prayer to you, Lord, that everyone out here can let go and find the inner peace you cannot find nowhere else, Lord. I ask that you bless everyone in this area, how you bless your children, and that everyone is abundant. Abundantly in love with you, Lord. Amen. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great work. Amen. 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 Amen.
share that those are all tricks of the enemy. And our young deacon in training, young evangelist, young minister in training, huh? Don't y'all see uh, a pastoral and minister and yes. evangelist in front of they're led by the spirit God said if, if the adults won't do it I'll go get a child to bring my word Amen. and there's too many adults stuck in there what she say but they stuck in their addictions and their bitterness and their hatred and their anger Right. and they don't want to let go your whole household is being oppressed because you don't want to let go. This young man inspired me. And the funny thing was, y'all know I don't do nothing unless God tell me to do it. And I said, Lord, who do you want to do the, the uh, youth service? And he told me very clearly, they've been asking, they have no interest i don't want them touching any part of youth day i don't want anybody doing anything for my people if they're doing it with an unwilling heart because they're like cancer and they're corrupting my church Amen. and i'm separating the wheat from the tares i'm getting rid of the sh the, 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 the goats from the sheep i'm literally putting a wedge between my people and people of the world. And we gonna start seeing some folk that you thought was real folks for Christ that are not gonna look anything like Christ. Because that's where we are at spiritually. A prophet, a true prophet, has been given vision of things in the future. And those things in the future must come to pass. In order for that person to be considered a true prophet of God. Now you can prophesy and say things that God has ministered to you to prophesy to the church and that's different. But to walk in the office of a prophet, you have got to have some criteria that follows along with it. When God gave me Albert, showed me Janiah. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be biased. So I put it out there. Who would like to do the word? You remember? Mm -hmm. You remember? Yes. And my granddaughter said, I'll do it this year. Mm. I asked Bert's son, Albert, the fifth, <laughs> would you like to bring the word? And he said, yes. And from the moment he said yes, and he just confirmed something, the moment he said yes, the devil has been on his back. No, y'all have no idea. See, we running around, grumbling and complaining about certain things in our lives. But if you've truly been called by God, the devil hates you. Consider yourself blessed to be a partaker of Christ's suffering. That young man got baptized. And I heard the weekend later, he went to a camping trip and the whole campground was intoxicated. Trying to get him to indulge. And as he said out of his own mouth, sin is okay. God will forgive you. Saints, we cannot have that mindset any longer. Sin is not okay. Now you falling and tripping and doing a couple things here and there and you immediately feeling convicted. And I'm gonna say something, cause little Ricky, you know, he like, who, me? Let me say this. When God is tapping at your heart, that's the first thing we think. Oh, they talking about me. How many people felt like God was talking to you today? Raise your hand. You know what that means? God loves you Amen. and he wants your attention. And he's not talking, uh, 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 through the, through the minister or the, uh, uh, the person speaking to point you out. But your spirit man is saying you need to listen and you need to change some things because you're gonna find yourself lost in that dark world and there is no coming back. 
God's long suffering season is over. So not only this past year, this young man then had to endure a lot of trials and tribulations. I'm not gonna tell all his business, but I believe it was the day before gave the assignment and then the next day a couple days later is when that happened it was a couple days later a couple days within a week you, we, yeah, but i think it was real close like yeah. two days or something or the next day or something crazy so i asked deacon bert if he would tell his son would he accept the invitation to bring the word for youth day and he agreed and i gave him what the, what the message was going to be about. Uh, now, Janaya, God gave it to her. All of it. The scripture, all of it. Because she came to me, she's like, Granny, do I have to go off of what you want me to preach about? I said, well, not really. Did God give you some? She said, well, good, because he already gave it to me. <laughs> He's already wrote. Did he? Yes. That's how we had the whole conversation. People of God, you gotta start talking to your children. Stop talking at your children. Amen, that's facts. We don't, we don't talk to them. We don't dialogue. You, 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 and then we got backwards relationships where your kids start getting a little grown and they think they can talk to you and talk mm -hmm. at you. A child is to stay in a child's place. Amen. A place of respect. And if your house is out of order, get it back in order. Because God is going to hold you accountable. No matter what happens, you're going to be held accountable. He loaned these children to us. I gave Albert the assignment. And I want to say within the next 48 hours, there was a, a tragedy at, at his house. His, his stepfather was found unconscious, and I, I don't know the status. Yeah, he's, he's gone. He passed? Yeah, he's gone, yeah, as of 4 o'clock yesterday, did he clear, or Saturday? Yes, yeah, yesterday. He's Saturday. gone. I can go into the Saturday. Saturday. So I gave Albert the assignment. And like I said, within 48 hours, his stepdad, they found him unconscious. They called the ambulance. They tried to get him revived. And he passed. But I'm going to say something because the Holy Spirit showed me something. And y'all know, I don't open my mouth on nobody. I, I have learned my mouth is power. I have really learned I can't just frivolously talk any longer. When I speak, the words are direct. The words are going to make something happen. I had shared in my private prayer life, Lord, all these people coming up against our children. I don't know if y'all remember this, but I even said it on live in Bible study and at service. These witches and these warlocks and these other folk that keep coming up against our house. If they put their mouth on us again, Lord, deal with them. How many of y'all remember me saying that? Raise them high. Several of you were here. They put their mouth on him. Y'all do the mouth. I need y'all to understand how serious a time we are in. They put their mouth on him telling him it's okay to sin. It's okay to keep living the way you live it. Albert, you stay encouraged because God is getting ready to do something so phenomenal with yes. your life right now. Yes. You will see every country on this planet. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
and do not carry that spirit of grief because it doesn't belong to you. That spirit of guilt, that spirit of shame, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb restore this young man from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, I declare and decree a legion of angels to surround him, cover him and keep him. Everything that the enemy has tried to whisper in your ear, I rebuke you and send you back to the pits of hell. In the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach. This is not a game. Church, as some people think, church is all that hooping and hollering and clapping and shouting and rejoicing and putting on shows. That ain't church. Church is watching people's lives change, get saved, sanctified, set free, drug addicts becoming drug free, alcoholics becoming clean and sober, prostitutes coming, turning their lives around, people who are crippled, blind, and crazy, being healed, set free, and delivered. Do you all know that just how God used both of these young people, and Lily and all the youth here today, they carry the fire. The Holy Ruach is in them. It's in you. But see, we make excuses and we make choices to keep living the way we want to live. Right. Cause you allow, what did, what did, what did, what did, what did, what did I really start with? What was your, what was our scripture? Second we did not, God did not give us a spirit of what? Fear. And why are you, why are we not changing? Fear. Right. Right. People don't want to change because they're afraid. I don't want to look different. I don't want nobody to talk about me if I stop kicking it with my gang banging friends. I've been in, I've been with friends that was gang bangers, drug dealers, all the above. But I walked away. When God started tapping at my heart, like, no, you need to step off. You ever get that little feeling like, don't get in the car. Mm -hmm. Don't you go with them. And on a fluke, making a video, he waving a gun and he accidentally shoot his friend in the head. Now this young man, life is gone. On a fluke, on a, I want to get some clicks, likes, and shares, and some hype, and some fame. Oh, I bet you he got a whole lot of views. Mm -hmm. But now he's sitting in jail. Jesus. And that was his friend. That happened to my brother. He had a best friend. And his friend, they was playing with a gun. And it went off and it killed the boy. That boy went and did 15 years in jail for accidentally shooting his friend. Y'all need to make better choices. And young ladies, you don't need to use your bodies. That's all you think you worth is your body. You're worth more than that. So much more. You guys are beautifully and wonderfully created in God's image and his yes. likeness. Yes. And that's why the devil hates you so much and why he wants you to change your hair, your eyelashes, your lips, your bottoms, your tops, your everything. He don't want you to look like who God created you to be. Don't wear your natural hair. Don't wear anything natural. Because he don't want you to like you for you. So what do we do? Everybody on TikTok, everybody on Instagram, they all look exactly the same. Don't y'all agree? Everybody got the same teeth. Everybody got the same <laughs> booty. Everybody got the same tatas. Right. Everybody got the same waistline. Everybody got the same kind of hair. Huh? 
You don't see white women trying to have black girls hair. Oh, but can I tell you something about the black women's hair? Does anybody know anything about the ethernet? Do you understand that your hair is power? Come on. No, listen to what I'm telling you. Your hair is power. Your hair is in coils. Look it up. Why do you think they want you to take everything, toothpaste, fluoride, everything to deaden your senses, everything we eat, everything we drink, everything we're ingesting is blocking your third eye. I didn't have some people get real crazy with me about, oh, that ain't biblical. God made the third eye. Come on. Everything God makes, the devil uses. Everything. But in the book of Isaiah, it talks about God covering up their eye. See, they had this spiritual eye that they could see things. But they were abusing it. So God said, I'm not going to let you see no more. And he covered their eyes. Mm. Yo, hair, why do you think the devil wants you to wear fake hair? So you don't have that spiritual connection. Huh? Why do you think he wants you to put on fake eyelashes? So you can't see your natural beauty. So when you take the lashes off, you don't look like you no more. Because you don't got so used to looking at and looking like that other girl. <laughs> oh, can I get an amen? Amen. tired of mom taking mine off. <laughs> Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Amen. Did you hear what? Which what are we gonna what are we gonna put a, uh, uh, call this young lady? I already know she a prophet. Right. Did you hear what she said? Mm -hmm. We cannot be followers anymore, and this goes for the adult women too. The young women are watching us. You can't come rolling in here with skirts this short, hair all the way down to the ground, nails like daggers. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. There's decency, decent yeah. and in order. <coughs> so I just want y'all to really allow yourself to absorb how the enemy is using us. How many of you have really been going in your prayer closet? So from now until the last day of the revival, I have asked everybody, anybody that will listen, if you really want your life to change, set apart minimum 30 minutes, but more so I would say minimum one hour. Turn everything off. No TV, no radio, no nothing. Just put on some gospel music. Have your Bible there. Put your hand on your Bible. Lord, talk to me. Pray. Flip it open. And let God minister to you. And watch how you start to hear his voice. Watch how things start changing. Watch how he starts telling you what to do with yourself. Huh? Anybody had any results so far? Raise your hand. I see. Oh, praise God. Look around, y'all. Raise them and look around. That's a blessing. Give God some praise. I'm going to give the mic back to Lily. Amen. But I felt really led to share that because the Bible always also says, do not consider yourself. Right? Uh, 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 how I say, uh, uh, suffering for no reason. You are suffering because you belong to Christ. Do not consider your suffering as a strange thing. Amen. The devil don't like you. He's a roaring lion. We just don't see him. So at every moment, he's wandering around looking at who he can... Steal, 
who he can kill and who he can destroy. And if you ain't got God in your life and you ain't serving God, you can have him in your heart. But if you ain't serving him, you, 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 you wide open. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on up. Praise the Lord. Anyone need Jesus as their Lord and Savior? 
got him. Everybody covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Amen. Is there an announcement about how we're going to go out in there for the carnival?